Canadians. Some think hockey, beaver, and snow. But do we see the whole picture? Hear the story of Canada. The first Europeans who reached the coast of present-day Canada are the Vikings. In 1001, a Viking named Leif Erikson sails off the Iceland, discovers the Greenland, and decides to explore further to reach a new land, which he calls Vineland, but sails away. Sometime later, the Vikings returned and found small settlements in present-day Canada. However, somehow they are forced to leave. Different natives are inhabiting these lands already. Mostly Algonquin language group speakers, they established the Council of Three Fires, a defensive alliance created to defend against the Iroquois people. In future, the Europeans will use animosities among the natives against them. The lands of present-day Canada become forgotten until the end of the 15th century. Henry VII patrons a mission across the Atlantic, which John Cabot leads. Cabot discovers present-day Newfoundland and names it a Newfoundland. A bit later, Jacques Cartier, a Frenchman, initiates two expeditions and on a day on St. Lawrence, sails into a river. Its name then becomes St. Lawrence River. The interesting part is, since his journey, the territories being colonized by the French start to be called Canada. During the expedition, a local native guiding the French pointing villages with his finger saying Canada, which in the Huron-Iroquois language meant a settlement. The name Canada developed from the word Canada. Until the beginning of the 17th century, no European settlements survive. Samuel de Champlain funds the first settlement up north from Florida. He decides to sail up the St. Lawrence River to establish Port Royal, and later on creates a settlement named after the local language, meaning narrow river. Quebec, Acadia, a French colony in America, is formed. Meanwhile, the English find North America appealing. Henry Hudson, sailing along the coast, discovers bay and gives it the name, the Hudson Bay. The year is 1629. One of the bloodiest conflicts in the history of Europe continues. It is the Thirty Years' War, which also resounds across the ocean. English corsairs take Quebec without a fight but in 1632, the French retake it and in 1642, establish another settlement, Montreal. The first trade undertakings in Canada are led by the French. They are establishing trading companies and dominate the coast. The English want to profit and must seek routes up north. In the year of 1670, they form a Hudson Bay Company. They focus on the fur trade and competition between the English and the French continues. The French develop settlements until the 1685th the population of New France reaches 10,000 people. By 1740 it will expand fivefold. European colonization brings an effective Christianization of the natives. But Canada becomes a profitable fur and skin business center. With the arrival of the 18th century the French control of Canada starts to weaken. After the War of the Spanish Succession, France is forced to acknowledge the British control over the Hudson Bay and the Newfoundland. The UK expands its possessions. Up until the middle of the 18th century, the tensions between the two powers will rise, to be finally decided during the Seven Years' War. The British take over the French territories and face the possibility of rebellion. Therefore, expel the French-speaking population south. France loses the war and in the Treaty of Paris is forced to give up all their territories in Canada to the British. Canada becomes British. However, the French population remains a formidable power. The British decide to treat the French carefully. The American Revolution breaks out and the colonists from the south hope that Canadians will join them in a joint fight against the Crown. Their hopes are futile. Canadians are tired of wars. Unlike the South, their prosperity depends on exports to Britain. It is dependent on good relations with London. Canadians do not want to fight. The Americans attack, but defeated near Quebec, retreat. The wars in North America come to an end. The United States gains independence, and the British settlers from the 13 colonies being against the revolution move to Canada. British Parliament splits the old French territories in half. 
George Vancouver, sailing along the west coast of Canada, gives a discovered island his name, Vancouver. Travelers undertake inland explorations. In 1812, the USA declares war on the British and invades Canada for the second time in history. In Canadian memory, Laura Secker becomes the national hero. At her house, the American forces establish an HQ. She overhears their plans of attack and walks 32 kilometers on foot to warn the Canadians. The US Army retreats again. At the beginning of the 19th century, population is growing fast. Timber industry becomes more important than trade. Canals are created to move resources. Thanks to sufficient building materials, shipyards are growing. Canada, inspired with the US liberty, starts to voice out demands for democratic reforms. In Upper and Lower Canada, two rebellions break out. The rebels want to overthrow the British and create a republic. They are pacified, but give a clear message. The British who remembered the American Revolution, agreed to concessions. Reforms begin and, in the end, lead to Canadian autonomy. The Act of Union joins Upper and Lower Canada. Responsible government concept forms and the French and the British Canadians are forced to work together to achieve a mutual goal. The United Kingdom and the US signed the Argonne Treaty, which ends the border disputes. British Columbia and the Vancouver Island become British. Canada finally gains democratic self-government and all its provinces join in one dominion by the name of Canada. Queen Victoria chooses Ottawa for the capital. However, the economic growth is weak. Based on future estimates, until the beginning of the 20th century will grow only 1% per year. Period is close to stagnation. Many Canadians emigrate to the US. The formal rule stays in the hands of the British monarchy. Canadian government sends expeditions up north and creates the Northern Territories. That leads to Red River Rebellion in the areas inhabited by Methis population. The rebellion ends in a deal and the government creates Manitoba. In the year of 1871, the British Columbia becomes a province. With the expansion of the railways, the end of the 19th century sees economic revival and rapid growth of the population. Immigrants from the UK and Eastern Europe arrive. Vast prairies open for settlement. Canada develops. In 1896 in Klondike, a gold rush breaks out. Yukon province is established to control the situation. In 1905, Alberta and Saskatchewan join the Confederacy. The beginning of the century marks an economic boom in Canada. The country becomes the fastest developing country in the world up until the First World War. Being a part of the British Empire as a dominion, English-speaking Canadians see no contradiction in being Canadian and a British at the same time. Canadians are expected to give their lives in the name of the Empire. London is not disappointed. Over 60,000 Canadian soldiers die at Ypres. Some and Vimy Ridge. Over 400,000 Canadians fight and about 200,000 is injured. <coughs> Traumatic experience changes Canada. Some historians call the First World War a bloody tribute for independence and some a birth of the nation. The casualties make the public opinion see the senselessness of dying for British interests. Trauma starts to make them see themselves as separate from the British. The early interwar period is the time of prosperity and involving consumerism. Canada transmits the first hockey radio edition in history and in 1923 signs the Halibut Treaty, the first deal with the US excluding British involvement. However, along the recession and coming out of the 30s, Canada faces significant losses in exports. Weekend Great Britain acknowledges the autonomy of its dominions with the state of Westminster. However, it keeps its right to change their constitution and establishes an office of the Governor General. Unemployment rate reaches 23%. The price of gas is so high that cars pulled by horses start to appear on the Canadian roads. Around 1939, recession reaches its peak. Second World War erupts and takes around 45,000 of Canadian lives. Canadians take massive losses and after many years they will accuse the British of treating their men as a cannon fodder. During the D-Day, Canadians reached the farthest inland positions. 
and back home, the first socialist government in North America in history comes to power. In 1949, Newfoundland decides to join Canada as the 10th province. After the war, Canada experiences another economic boom. New waves of immigrants come to Canada and diversify its society. In 1960, in Quebec, a quiet revolution takes place. The Liberals bring secularization to education. In 1980, the province of Quebec decides not to become independent, but a year later bans the English language on the road signs. In the year of 1982, Great Britain legislates Canada Act and enables it to make amendments to its constitution. The same year, Canada legislates a new constitution. 